People always share about how much money they make. They never talk about how much money they lose. Oh, if they can make so much money, and I'm looking at the market, I've been in the market for so many years, probably I'll know the market as well. And so you get into the market again. <laughs> Irene Zhao is back. One of the most influential women in the crypto industry. She's here to reveal her secret on pivoting her Instagram influence to joining the Twitter crypto space. What do you think about the reputation that female influencers make money just for being pretty? That's the assets they have, right? And it's really tough to remain pretty because you have to put in a lot of efforts. Because people are not dumb. If you keep using it, people will get bored anyways. If you know how to make the best value out of it, then you are smart. You went down the meme coin rabbit hole recently. Why? I was trying to find alpha on Twitter, got into one group chat, and they were talking about this troll. Elon Musk changed his Twitter profile to chief troll officer. Some traders bought the token immediately, and now I think they made like million dollars. What are some of the concrete experiences you've lived where you learned the most? You should make your team very lean. Don't try to make five-star teams. Oh, I want the best people from here, 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 here. Just start as lean as possible and don't expand so quickly. Why Chinese people are so into Bitcoin despite government banning Bitcoin so many times? There's a lot of Bitcoin farmers from China, basically. They are trying to make more money from the gas phase on the Bitcoin ecosystem. Do you think it's possible for an entrepreneur to be super successful in his or her first venture? Irene is back on the podcast, which is amazing. After an amazingly successful first episode where we had more than, e more than 11 million views across platform, which is fucking crazy to be honest for us and um i mean it, it actually helped us understand what people like to see right which is not necessarily talking about crypto I mean, at all at least at least last year because no one gave a fuck about crypto maybe this year is going to be a bit more but depending but it on the has platform to be really 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 general knowledge about crypto yeah and it, yeah it cannot be anything specific because it's not gonna appeal to the mass audience they no. don't understand anything it really depends on the platform actually and we realize tiktok instagram youtube short i like... mean unless it's twitter then it's exactly different. twitter yeah, only yeah. twitter people are interested in the details absolutely which is why now we split the the podcast between different parts one is more like i mean obviously we want it to be interesting but one is more what's more likely to go viral on all the platforms except twitter oh and then what's more likely to go viral on twitter mm. um but yeah, maybe for people who've been living under a rock, who are you? Just oh. just a, a short description for people who already maybe didn't see the other episode and uh, oh, okay. who don't know you. <laughs> I haven't done introduction for a long time. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Irene. I'm the founder of Soko and Irene Dao. So I got into crypto earlier 2020 and I start to learn how NFT can really help uh creators to revolutionize the relationship between them and their fans. So I started a platform called Soko, which is a web 2.5 social platform that helps all the creators to launch their own NFT collections at the click of a button. When you say web 2.5, what do you mean exactly? Web 2.5 means it's like a bridge between web 2 and web 3. So NFT is web 3, but we are helping web 2 creators and a mass audience to create their own NFT. So we call it a Web 2.5 platform where we um, help the people from both Web 2 and Web 3 to do their own collections. Mm. Mm. Because the main problem today <clears throat> is still user, user, uh, user interface, right? Especially in crypto. Yes. Kind yes, of like yes. hard and like you need to find a way to bridge all the people who are familiar with the uh, when we talk about Web2, like it's basically all the applications that we're using today. Mm. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, mm. Twitter, etc. Mm. And then there's this new Web3 world, which is kind of like probably intimidating for most people who don't it really know It is still intimidating it. and it gets more intimidating. Yeah, the more you go in, in yeah. there, the more it's intimidating. Yes. So I think we can continue what we were talking about before, which is... The trading on the yeah part, yeah because, yeah let's talk about because it. this is a really interesting point because actually one of the main way a lot of people start crypto mm. is that right by trading by by thinking that they might be able in this you know they're like oh this crypto thing is very interesting and it can go up a lot or go down a lot and then mm. if it goes up a lot but I don't necessarily have a lot of money to play with but which, you know, like we all wish we had more money, 
to start to make more money faster, right? Yeah. And then there is this thing called leverage trading yes. where you can actually play <clears throat> or kind of invest, I mean, trade with money that you don't have mm. by using leverage, right? Mm. So, so do you want to talk about that and kind of like your journey with it? Because you told me that you, it's one of the things that you really like to do right now. Trading. I think that trading my trading journey is very short. It's only like less than two hours or like less than two months. Okay. But I almost experienced everything in the, the <laughs> past two months. I make a lot of money. They go back to zero. They make money again. They over leveraged and got liquidated. And then I put in more money as the margin and I lost everything again. <laughs> and now I'm starting all over again. Always in like two months. I feel like I experienced everything already. Yeah. Why are you still doing it? Um, why am I still doing it? Yeah. I think it becomes it becomes like a habit. It's not really to make. I mean, of course, a habit or a, habit habit. I feel a habit like or an addiction. It's not addiction because I know exactly my goal is still to make money. So we don't call it addiction because for addiction it's like gambling because you don't know whether you are going to make money or not. You just feel the thrill to trade. But for me, it's not really about the thrill. It's really about try to at least not losing money again. So I don't see it's addiction. I, I think it's still like a habit. I become more and more professional, of course, along the way, because I start to look, uh, w read, read books about trading and mm. how people lose everything and how people um, <laughs> start over again and how you can have actually have some strategy before trading. Like you have stop, stop loss, everything. Before that, I don't have anything. Can you go through the journey, two months? which doesn't sound like a lot, but in crypto is actually a lot. Like, I mean, a lot of things can happen, as you said. Yes. And what you learn, like every step of the way, because I I've been through the same journey, yeah. but at some point I stopped because I lost. Really? You stopped? Okay. Mm. The, the, the leverage trading, I thought. What's the leverage you used? So I was using two or three X. Only max. two or three X. Yeah, yeah. Only two or three. My strategy was 2019, late 2019, my strategy was I had quite a good amount of Bitcoin, but I wanted mm. more Bitcoin and I didn't have more cash. Mm. So I was like, I discovered BitMEX. Yes, right? exactly. The, the BitMEX people, days. BitMEX is like, they trade to coins with coins, right? It's like not USDT pairs, exactly. coin compare. Exactly. So basically I was like, yep. oh, I have this Bitcoin and I can use them as a collateral yes, yes, to yes. trade and make more Bitcoin. Yes, Which for yes. me was, if I make more Bitcoin and then the Bitcoin price goes up, it's like a, a win, double win, win. Yeah. exactly. And you're like, oh, the, I, I found the holy grail, right? Yeah. And then I, before starting with real money, I was, I knew that, you know, 90 or 95 or 99% of the people actually don't make money mm -hmm. trading. So I was like, I need to understand how I'm not part of these 90 or 95 <laughs> or 99. And so I spent probably four months trying to learn and doing some different things. I even bought a course and everything. Mm -hmm. And then at some point I thought I understood the trick, right? Yeah. I was like, I'm... I thought I was smarter than most people, which yes. when you think you're smarter than most people, you're probably not smarter than most people. <laughs> and so it was a bit crazy. So I started, my strategy was very simple. Bitcoin was 7K back then, wow. December, 2019. My strategy was just long only, mm. right? Mm. Compound. So basically I was leveraged two or three X because I knew oh, if I'm leveraged two X, Bitcoin price needs to go down 50% for me to be liquidated, yeah. which is almost impossible, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I thought, yes. right? And then I was also, I'm going to trade only, trade only with 10% of my Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. in case it goes down too crazy, yeah. I can top up, add more margin, yeah. lower my liquidation. It price. sounds like a very safe plan. Exactly. I th so I was like, man, I'm safe. And yeah, because I had quite are. a good amount of Bitcoin to play with, like even 10% mm -hmm. would be like a, significant amount then i thought you know you leverage yourself two or three x yeah and then every time bitcoin goes up three yeah. percent or whatever you close the position so okay. you're up nine or ten percent okay you replay it and then you compound those gains so instead yeah. of compounding interest over years you compound gains it sounds over... like a very safe plan and, and if you if you do the math when you compound you know three percent at three x I don't know, a hundred times you go from like 10K to like two mil or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I was like, man, this makes so much sense, right? First month. Okay. First month of, so, so to the, December 2019, my goal was I was starting another company in data and we were paying ourselves, I was in Geneva, we we're paying ourselves 6K Swiss franc a month. So I was like, my goal for the first month of trading is to match this. So I double okay. my salary, right? Yeah. First month, I made 30K. 
realized mm -hmm. in Bitcoin. So I was like, oh man, 30K and then Just this is going to go up. Bitcoin. You made four. Exactly. Right? Then yeah. I was like, this is going to go up 10X, it's going to be 300K in the future. Mm -hmm. What? Crazy. Sack. And then I discovered, this was just trading Bitcoin. Then I yeah. started, I discovered this contract on BitMix, the ETH. Oh. So I was like, oh, it's more volatile. Mm -hmm. So I can trade ETH instead, right? Yeah. With my Bitcoin as collateral, I make more Bitcoin. Uh. First week of the, I did that, 80K realized profit. Mm -hmm. And then second week, 80K. So I started to go crazy. And then. So it's 160K in total. Uh, 80K and 80K. Right? 80 plus uh, then 30. So 190 in Bitcoin, uh -huh. right? Mm. Back then. And Bitcoin maybe went, but it was pure luck. Bitcoin went from 7K to 10K. Oh, in and, that. You still and I was have just Bitcoin. like leveraging long, closing, replaying. Yeah. And at some point, like, uh, obviously the market started to kind of fluctuate Stag a little bit it was stagnating and then covid happened and then there was the covid crash oh and i just basically lost everything how Plus, much does it crash for bitcoin i mean i was leveraged on eth which ETH probably oh. went down 70 percent in a day 70 percent in a day i think so something like that oh, and so, so you got liquidated yeah meanwhile i had topped up most of my bitcoin because like the price was stagnating but there was something called funding fees yeah, that was yeah, completely the funny eating my, my yeah, yeah. you know. The funny thing is so expensive. So I got completely fucked and lost like 80% of my money, all my money, all my net worth in like that March crash. You mean so, including your, the money you had, not, not the money you made? I mean, everything included. Oh, 80% okay. gone. Poof. So then I learned trading on leverage is not for me. <laughs> and I was never sleeping. It was fucking yeah. horrible. I was like, as you said, you're on the plane, you go crazy. It's 24 7, Mark. I couldn't see. Yeah. So, like, yeah. what's your experience? Because mine was disaster. Yours is more, it's crazy. I don't want to ex talk about my own experience anymore. Yours is even crazier. But it's very extreme conditions that happen to you, right? Because I don't think under least market condition, it can crash like 50% or 70%. What happened two weeks ago? Yeah, but it's but it, because I leverage only like 20x. Okay. So, so it's different but, because only a little bit change in the price my portfolio will drop a lot. Because, because for example, I don't agree with you. Because I thought the same. Oh, it's very extreme. But look, in 2021, Bitcoin went from 60K to 30K, like within a few days or weeks mm -hmm. when there was the first crash. And then it went back up to like 69K. So there is these liquidation events every few months or maybe once or twice a year, yeah. which is made to liquidate everyone. And the mm. problem is for me, what I yes, understood- Yes, to liquidate the both the long and the short. Exactly. Yeah, so they suddenly you... decrease a lot to uh, liquidate all the loans and suddenly increase a lot to liquidate the short, like probably within a week, they can li liquidate both party and only the exchange make money. So for me, for me, I understood at that day that trading on leverage seems like an illusion or you use these stop losses, right? Which, but they don't always work from what I understood. Like sometimes like it just doesn't, if it goes down to. Yeah, too but quick. stop loss is also very dangerous because suddenly it just drop a lot, but then it goes back again. So actually, if you have enough margin, you're probably not going to lose that amount of money. If you, right, sometimes it's, it's bounced back. You can, you can, you can, so basically so, for me, the whole thing was a mind fuck. And I was like, yeah, it I was can't crazy. sleep anymore. I lost so much money. It's not made for me. And if you hold spot. Yeah, you could have and made you don't even much trade more, right? in a bull yeah. market. You outperform everything. Yeah, so yeah, that's like, what people say. That like after tried everything about trading, they say we should just buy spot. Exactly. Don't. That's, that's trade, what happened to me. Yeah, don't trade paper at all. So that's why for me it's really interesting to know why you're trading on leverage and all this stuff. Maybe you're still like in the journey of like. I think you are right. Realizing Probably I that, just close right? all my positions after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's the biggest takeaway for this podcast. I should just close all my positions. <laughs> and just to be able to sleep play. and take a plane normally, right? To sleep, sleep at nine and like be chill. Which I think chill. right now is better, but but when I just started, it's really hard to sleep because you know it's twenty four hours, right? And once when you just keep losing, you have to keep adding more money into the trading account, otherwise you're gonna get liquidated. <laughs> so I think that's really crazy. It's pretty crazy. I completely agree with you. Uh, so overall, and also right, I think internet also plays a very important role in in terms of your journey because people always share about how much money they made, or oh, internet. Right, Absolutely. the unrealized gains. Absolutely. And they that's show how, only profit. Yeah, they never talk about how much money they lose. Yeah. They only talk about how much money they made on, yeah. on, on trade in trading. And then they think, oh, if they can make so much money, and I, I'm looking at the, the markets every day, and also I'm being this 
in the market for so many so many years. Probably I know the market as well. I mm. can try to trade as well. And so you get into the market and get fucked. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, what I realized is like the people who really make a lot of money trading on yeah. leverage are the people who go, who basically got fucked so many times, lost oh. everything so many times, and started to adjust their strategy and to more develop a sort of like gut feeling about the market mm -hmm. rather than you know TA and like all these basically uh, indicators that traders. Most of them they're saying they just use I think volume and price mm -hmm. and gut feeling at some point. They're like, oh, I mm -hmm. use these and like I can kind of like know. Uh, on average, and I yeah. try to know if I lose, I try to lose to limit my losses. That's like the key. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yes, yes. I think there's many ways for people to make money, like different ways to make money. But the only way to keep money is to have stop loss whenever you can. And mm. also, you have the strategy before you get into the market, you say, Oh, how much money I'm gonna lose today? Mm. If like once it exceeds the kind of amount, you just close everything and they just leave. Which is, ex yeah. which for me, maybe it's because I, I hate losing and I just love winning. <laughs> was no, it was impossible i was uh, like i can't go into something knowing ah oh, i'm gonna lose that much and accept that you know because the more you oh, lose you're, you're like it might just go back up yes 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 or yes. and then you, you lose more and more and more and like cutting the loss is so mm -hmm. painful and, i know i know i mean the but whole if you thing made enough pain. money in the beginning and you are just like making less money right if you think in that way is it's, it's better yeah yeah for, for me it was more like i'll invest I'll kind of do these swing trades for two years. Like basically you buy, mm -hmm. spot, you sell after two years. Oh. And then I'm just going to build things because my brain is not made for trading on leverage. <laughs> like it's just fucking And my... if you're trading, you have to be like really full time, like 24 yeah, hours. Exactly. Even if you are out having fun with your friends, you are you're not... looking at the screens. Yeah. If it's going down or going up. I think it's really very like man fuck. That's a crazy one. I remember yeah. being at my sister's birthday. She was turning 30 okay. and being crazy there or yes. being with, you know, my girlfriend or my friends and never mentally present. Like exactly. that's the problem exactly. of trading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. people You're think, mentally present. People think I'm going to trade for freedom because I don't like my nine to five. Mm -hmm. But actually it's consuming you 24 seven it's and it's true. destroying your mental health it's and true. you're not even true. present anymore, right? It's true. Yeah. Not at all. So yeah, and anyway, when we are doing the podcast now, I'm still thinking about my <laughs> position because I loaned it at like four three four zero zero, so, and so now, now it's like one thousand dollars, like so, one thousand done. So, so I'm now, thinking, like, if it's going up or going down while I'm doing this podcast so, with you. So now you, <laughs> so now you have open positions, right? Yeah, I have at open this positions, very moment, yes, horrible. It's been like a few days. I started like a week ago, when horrible. it was like high. Yeah, <laughs> so it's been like a a week. How I even close oh, my positions? Yeah, I feel you. I feel. And also, you. I talked to a lot of people, uh, in Taiwan when I went to Taipei this time. I talked to a lot of traders. I talked to the people from exchange. Blah blah blah. blah. I thought I learned some strategies, and then I'm gonna reapply again. But still, the same thing happens. So <laughs> I'm trying to. It also is like a, you know, like competing with yourself, right? If if this time I lose, I make money or like lose less money than the previous months. I improved. So to me, it's like a journey. It's like something, some skill I want to master. What What's the max that you risk? Like percentage of like all your crypto holdings or... I don't know. How do you limit? One or two percent. I only okay. use one percent okay. of the money I, I had to play to, to play with trading. So it's fine. But if you lose one percent, then you add another percent. And then if you lose another percent, you add another percent. That became 3%. Because I have <laughs> Ethereum and the ETH price keeps going up. Okay. So, so it's your hedge, basically. The, the, the price of the of, of the spot actually covers the loss on in the future. So Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Amazing. There is, I mean, talking about crypto, there is another few things that you've been very interested uh, by. So not only trading on leverage, but also meme coins. Yes, meme coins. You went down the meme, meme coin rabbit hole recently. Why? Because I was trying to find alpha on Twitter, but I realized Twitter is not actually where the original alpha is. The, alpha, the, the, the earliest alpha started with the, all these group chats from Telegram group chat and WeChat group chats where people all start to talk about it. And then I, I, get, I just got into one group chat. I was looking at what people are talking about and they were talking about this troll. Because Elon Musk changed his Twitter profile to Chief Troll Officer, T-R-O-L-L. -L. Okay. And the traders, some traders, bought the coin immediately. Bought or created it? 
Mm? Bought it or created one because they're looking at oh, what is Elon? Oh, it was Musk already there. Okay, the the token was, was already there. But once Elon Musk changed his profile to Chief Troll Officer, some traders bought the token immediately. Yeah. I think just a week ago, and now I think they made like million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I was a bit late. I bought at like a price, but I still like five, five X. You're late, yeah. and you're up five hundred percent. Yeah, five hundred. I mean, four five hundred percent, five X. Yeah. That's terrible, right? <laughs> I mean. It, 5x in one I, week. I knew it. My God. I already know it when uh, when 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 uh, Elon Musk changed, but I didn't I didn't bother to buy it. You have to be very reactive. It's only after two or three days. I'm like, okay, fine, just buy a little bit. Yeah. So then this one is called up. Troll. Troll, yeah. Troll meme coin. T R O L L. Is there another meme coin that you are interested in or that you played with? Yeah, it's called Smiley. 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 Yeah. <laughs> It's another. It's it's also Elon Musk a uh, concept meme coin, yeah. I that that one I went like ten x, one thousand okay. percent. Yeah. Okay. That covers my loss in the future. So. Did you manage to sell? Because the problem when things yes, go up too I, quickly, I, I, yes, you don't I sell. Yes, I sold. I sold. I sold like fifty percent. Okay. Yeah. Because I know when people start talking about it on Twitter, it's time to sell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When it becomes. Otherwise, everything is going back to zero again. Exactly. When people start to talk about it. Yeah. Too much and. Uh, it's uh, it's probably a bit late, right? It's mm. not the moment to jump in. I think it's more important to know when to sell. It's more important than when to buy. Mm. Mm. Because if you don't sell anything, everything is going back to zero. Y y you talked about this meme also called that is doing crazy uh, returns and uh, a lot of people talking about it, it, about it on Twitter. Dog with hat. Oh, dog, dog with, with hat. hat. Yeah, yeah. I'm, now it's cat with hat. <laughs> it's everything with hat. Yeah, I did. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I didn't buy. Yeah. But what do you think about the dog with hat concept? And do you think it really has like a better potential than others? Just think. Some people were saying, "Hey, look, because there is a hat, and you can <laughs> add a hat everywhere." Like it's probably one of the best meme cons out out there. I don't know. I mean, I mean, for me, right? I just look at the concept because um, I'm not a Elon Musk fan, but I feel like Elon Musk really fits a lot of people in the crypto. Because yeah. everything related to him makes a lot of money. Yeah. So I'm just looking at all the coins that associate themselves with Elon Musk. And then it, it makes me more focused. Mm. Because that's the kind of the meme coin concept I was looking at. So I don't really bother about like like those coins on Ethereum on like Solana or AV, uh, AVAX because it's gonna distract me. So I only focus on Elon and what yes. he's talking about. Okay. Elon, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's another thing that uh, you've been captivated by which is BRC20 and BRC420. I so think I'm too late for BRC20. Can you explain what it is? Because even me, I mean, yeah, I kind of okay. know, but I kind of like don't, I, I follow, I, I lost the whole, uh, I mean, I missed the whole thing. BRC20 is just NFTs on Bitcoin. Yeah. It's like ERC20, but it's BRC20 right now. So it's like all everything, like like Ethereum, mm. now we move everything from Ethereum back to Bitcoin. It's, so it's like Arduinos. So it's like NFT attached on the Bitcoin ecosystem. And there's a lot of tokens, a lot of projects that are building on Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin layer two to help to um to to make the Bitcoin ecosystem more secure and faster. It's like a whole new ecosystem. But I think right now it's mainly for the Chinese people. For Bitcoin. I think about like 50% of the Chinese people are into the Bitcoin ecosystem. But for the Western, like you, only like 10 to 20%. So I think it's still early. Do you know why? Because I think there's a lot of um Bitcoin farmers, they are from China, basically. And they are trying to make more money from the gas fees on the Bitcoin ecosystem. That's the why they are trying to uh, talking about this concept right now. You know, those farming Bitcoins, right? Yeah. Yeah, they try to make more money by people trading on the Bitcoin ecosystem. So, so they make more trading fees. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's the concept originated from China. And it's still like more like Chinese people are talking about it and play around with it. Do you know how or why Chinese people are so into Bitcoin despite, you know, the government kind of banning Bitcoin so many times and even be banning Bitcoin mining, I think it was two years ago? Yeah. Which it's actually the thing that because crashed Bitcoin the price. Because Bitcoin is happening very soon and they, there's a chance they are not able to make as much money as before. And therefore, they are trying to create all this Bitcoin ecosystem, the least uh, narratives, so they can make more money before the Bitcoin heavy happens. Mm. That's some, some of the explanation I heard from my friends. So they think the Arduino is not going to be popular 
after the Bitcoin halving. It won't. It won't. Yeah. Why? Because once Bitcoin halving is like there's nothing more to 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 really um to promote. But if it's before that, people still want to talk about Bitcoin, uh, the farming, everything, so they can make money from the trading fees when the system got really congested. But the, of course, the American people or the mm. Western hate it, right? Because they just make the ecosystem even more congested. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Especially the true Bitcoiners who like always said that Bitcoin yeah, the not true Bitcoin anything Yeah, they the don't top, like right? it at all. Yes. But I think this is the like the new narratives right now and what's popular right now. And it's not really like um, not people are looking at it. I mean, still like for the Western, they are not really looking at Arduino's the the Bitcoin ecosystem right now. So I think there is still potential. Yeah, though that's why what I'm working on or like what I'm focusing on right now because I already missed the first hype, which mm -hmm. is probably started in June last year when Audi was like it's free mint. Yeah. Yeah. It's all I, free. Yeah, it's free. Now it's now it's like seventy dollars. There's too many things happening and it's really uh, impossible to. Yeah, Just so that's why I, yeah. I I didn't really look at L to like OP, Arbitrum. I don't really have time to look at that. Impossible, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. very difficult. You, you need to, to pick up a few things that you like. Yes. Probably more like that by interest and then like focus on that because it's impossible. There is too much innovation and... And it happens so fast. Yeah, yeah. Everything just happens within like two months. Yeah. Audi was like only like $10 or two months ago and now it's $70. So it just happened so fast within like the two months. Everything in crypto will just move too fast. And it's really hard to catch everything. Yeah. Mm. Um, we talked about... Um, you said before, you said, hey, I learned about the money management with my business. In uh, a very hard way. Do you want to tell us more about that? Because I, I would like to talk about business and the, rea the reality of entrepreneurship, mm. which most people still don't understand. They think, hey, they think when you start a company, you know, it's like freedom. Like mm. I'm financially not- It's not at all. And, and it, do you want to tell us about your, you know, you, you've been involved in your first big experience as an entrepreneur? We so call. Uh, what I are the key learnings from it? You still have some sort of freedom because you don't need to work on a nine to six job anymore. But what you give, give to uh, exchange the freedom is something that um, it's like the mental. You like you're like you're probably fucked like mentally every day, right? Absolutely. And you have people who are trying to get money from you every day when you when you when, when they know you actually raise so much money and just like a lot of bad things can happen when you actually have money you thought only good things happen but actually a lot of bad things happen when you actually have the money more and more, it's very very hard to keep more money yeah. more problems so many pro like the if the business is bigger there's more problems too yeah what are some of the like concrete experiences you've lived where you learned the most regarding this money thing, your money management, business, people trying to take advantage and where you would have acted differently had you known like how people are really and how greedy they are and how, yeah, not everyone has your values of like trying to do like the best out of the money you raise. Mm -hmm. As I said, I think you should make your, your team very lean at the start. Don't try to make a like all star like five star teams. Oh, I want the best people from from here 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 here. You're not gonna do anything when, when, when even though you have the best people in the team, because they are not really they cannot really um, contribute that much, even though they are together, right? So you should just start as lean as possible and don't expand so quickly. I think that's the most important lesson I learned. So stay lean. Have a big vision. Use also... whatever resources you have at yeah. the start, even if you had a lot of money to spend on. So you're saying even if you have a lot of money, you should still, it's very difficult, but you should still see how do I make the best of all like of, all simple the things you resources. Have right now. Yes, exactly. And not even this money, I should kind of like ignore it or like maybe invest a bit like wisely here and there, but mm -hmm. think more, hey, look, I raised, let's say, let's say, let's say I raised 5 million yeah. and I know uh, my entire costs for my current team for the year is 500k. Mm -hmm. So basically I can live, it's more having a mindset of, hey, 
now I can survive for 10 years without making money mm -hmm. instead of saying, hey, let's get 10 times bigger directly, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. because if you can survive it's, in time... I think it also depends on the market condition because sometimes if it's bull market and you have to really develop really, really fast. Otherwise, the, the hype is just going to go away. I think that's it, that is fine to expand, but you have to really know the exact right time to expand at the right uh, situation. Otherwise, the money just go away. And I, I went front tech really went popular and a lot of advisors uh, or like investors were like why don't you just do a a friend tech version like a ak like yeah. friend tech yeah and build into the so-called the platform yeah and of course it takes at least like two weeks right and by the time if i listen to his advice by the time we build the product out friend tech already died yeah so that's the time when you need to choose whether you want to build these functions or not whether you want to, to catch the hype or not it's basically yeah. learning how to control your FOMO, right? And the more mm. you have means, the more you're like, ah, if I can afford all this stuff, I can just FOMO in. Yeah, because the there's always a invest. delay. Yes. It's the same as buying a coin. Yeah. I have the money to buy the coin, but I'm FOMO FOMOing into this thing, but it's probably kind of too late. You have mm. to have like this kind of trust, like gut feeling and yeah. instinct. Probably that... bought at the top, right? When you, when, when you got it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really very hard. How hard is it to build a business? Oh, uh, how hard. I, it's just a lot of, but but I think it, it's hard, but the good thing is I learned a lot along the journey and I'm much more mentally tough right now compared to two years ago. You know, two years ago, when I started Irene Dao, there are so many people who are criticizing and they say I'm a man at Why? the time. Singular. Because they find a photo of me on a block shop wearing uh, like a costume. And they think I, like me, steal the photo from the blog shop to post it on my Twitter to farm engagement. But it was a real photo of you? Yeah, it's the blog shop who steal my photo on Instagram. But the people think I steal the photo, the, the photo from the blog shop to post on Twitter okay. because they find this photo on the least foreign blog shop. Okay. So they think I'm a man who is stealing the blog shop's photo to post as a woman. <laughs> and it's actually from a very big KOL. I still remember his name. It's called Genzi. Do you know Genzi? Who Genzi, is the, yeah, of course. Yeah, Genzi, yeah. He's the one that started everything. He said, oh, Irene is a man, blah, blah, blah. All these guys who, who bought his NFT got scammed because he was a man. And I literally, I cried, you know, because really? just because people think I'm a man. And actually, when I, when, I, when I talked to a very successful entrepreneur, like OG in the crypto space, I was like, and he saw me crying. He's like, why? He said, oh, because people think I'm a man. <laughs> and he was laughing. He said, I don't think you're ready to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> you are so mentally weak. <laughs> develop on that develop like this is so interesting but right now you it's, know I, I'm just like went through all these things for the past two years people blah blah blah, blah. That, that if people think you're a man or you are a monster you would not care anymore right because you developed your tolerance to stress and to yeah you, you stretch yourself so much yeah, yeah yeah absolutely for for me I mean I've been <laughs> building companies since I'm 23 and it's probably the way to become mature and grow as quickly as possible like mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. Like you have employees and then maybe you hire some people who have kids and a family to take care of, but then you need to fire them and all that <coughs> stuff. I remember crying, I mean, multiple times. Once I was crying at 23 because I had to fire my first co-founder. Once I was crying because I had to fire this dude who had a family to take care of, right? But it was not even my fault that we had to fire him. We had, we had gotten a big project that we needed more people on. We hired this dude and then after three or four months, we lose the big project because the person who hired us internally from this big company got fired. Mm. And so the whole political thing is fucked because he's not there anymore. So we're going to lose the project. And I'm like, fuck, I don't have the money anymore <laughs> yeah, to pay this yeah, guy. Yeah. But like, I'm, I'm a horrible person. I just hired this person. Yeah. He's a, has a family uh, depending on me. Uh, uh, uh. And like, I have to tell him tomorrow that it's over. Right. Mm. And so he's going to be in trouble because of me and the whole family and everything. And then you just spend your night, mm -mm. the night crying and mm -mm. feeling horrible. And then at the end of the day, I was just like, Hey man, like I'll just pay you a plane ticket wherever you want because I'm sorry. Right. And then, I mean, he ended up doing like really well anyway, but it's more like all these things that you think is like the end of the world, but actually it's not, it's just like one more shit, you know? Mm. And then at some point, the smaller shits that looked huge in the beginning, just mm -hmm. like, yeah, don't care. Yeah. And I got so mad when the first investor rejected the the the, the project. 
He didn't even reply. He just ghosted us. I was so mad when when I got ghosted by the investors. You I was mean like, an investor or a potential investor? A potential potential ah, investor. So yeah. it, uh, you basically learned that you should have zero ego towards customers, yeah. towards investors, towards people in general. Like the ego doesn't work in business because no mm. one gives a fuck about you. <laughs> That's completely yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like very I'm shameless now. Like no matter what you say now, okay. Don't care. Yeah, don't care. <laughs> Unbothered. That's, In I'm my a, lane, focused, moisturized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's true. I mean, if you think about, mm. if you everybody think about something and you have to take it to like take it personally, there's no way you can you keep growing or you can develop yourself, right? Because you are just like mentally fucked by so many different voices, so many criticisms, what like, whatever people can say about you. Probably even more when you're a woman, and you look good. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Don't you think so? Like people attack you much more, um, you know. There is, I mean, what do you think about the reputation, which is not really a reputation, mm. that female influencers make money just for being pretty? I mean, that's the assets they have, right? That's one of the assets I had, and as and I said, it's really tough to 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 remain pretty because you have to put in a lot of efforts to look good, to even look good. So I think if you have the assets and you know how to use it strategically, because people are not dumb. If you keep using it, re reuse, reuse, reuse it, people will get bored anyways, right? Yeah. You eventually lost that advantage. But if you know how to use it, um, like carefully, you know how to make the best value out of it, then you are smart. People will also think Absolutely. you are smart. Absolutely. Yeah. You went to at the first, they think, ah, oh, this, this woman just used his like her face to blah, blah, blah. But once you do it bigger and bigger, people think, oh, actually, she's, she's great. Smart. She's smart. So people change the perception where you are being successful. They help you justify what you have, you have been doing in the past. Is pretty privilege real? The pretty privilege. And so how much being pretty is helpful, especially, let's say, in business? Mm. Or is it actually complicated, right? Or makes things more difficult? Uh, I think being pretty is easier to approach people. Like you can approach people like easier than most other people. Absolutely. Yeah. But after that, how are you going to develop the, the superficial relationship into something more concrete? Then it's your uh, strengths and your communication skills or what you can offer besides the, all this superficial stuff. Yeah. How difficult do you think, I mean, from your experience, like how difficult was it to say like, hey, look, I'm just a, not just a pretty face, but I'm actually able to do more. Now we are talking, right? Now I'm there. But like, hey, look, I'm like building this business. I'm doing this thing like versus the person who is just there. And often like you're dealing with men, right? Mm -hmm. And with men with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And men with a lot of money, they have this tendency to probably infer that the pretty woman is just a pretty woman. Right, and that they're always going to be above, right? Especially in business. You see, it doesn't matter as long as I get what I want. It doesn't matter how <laughs> how, how they think of me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Because sure. if you are be with someone who are superior or like they have more resources than you, as long as you get what you want, it doesn't matter how he thinks of you. True. I get what I want, so. <laughs> <laughs> and as long as the relationship can like continue and I, mm. I the, the things that you, get, you you gave me, I can make it into something bigger or like better. Of course you are, you, you, you would want to give more, me more resources, right? Yeah. Mm. Do you think it's possible for an entrepreneur to be super successful in his or, he, uh, or her first venture? I don't think so. I think it's hard. Yeah. yeah. We, we had many examples here of like mega successful people, but most of them, they've built three, four oh. companies before. Have I, you met any successful entrepreneurs that the success succeed in the first time? You talk to so many entrepreneurs. So, I mean, you mean like first business venture? Yeah. Damn, I don't think so. Mm. I, I was hard. thinking about Alex Vanevik, who is okay. actually coming tomorrow again on the podcast. But even him, I think he had a consulting company at some point. And then he worked uh, for a crypto company that went bankrupt. I mean, he was not the founder. Okay. But I would think like 
it might have had a consulting company with some friends like much earlier, mm -hmm. which would be counting as the first, but like the Nansen is a mega success. Mm -hmm. um, someone who started directly and had massive success. You Luca? know, even... Luca, the founder of Peggy Penguin. He probably tried a lot of projects before. Uh, <clears throat> So I think failure is normal. Just should, we should normalize failures or should normalize project founders who rocked before. If, if you think about it, like finding, most people think, oh, this building a business is having an amazing idea and then executing perfect. And therefore you need to be like the smartest person because you need to identify and then execute. It's, I think it's more, entrepreneurship is more, you try something that makes sense to you And then it's very unlikely that it actually makes sense to a lot of other people. And then you just don't stop and you pivot or you change or you do something mm -hmm. slightly different or you do something completely different. Mm -hmm. And if you try forever, because you never stop, you basically never, you're never actually failing. Mm -hmm. And then one day, if you, uh, the other day we had uh, Eddie Travia, he was just saying that, he was saying, if you're willing to sacrifice everything mm -hmm. and you're patient, mm -hmm. it's probably closer to 10 years than to one year, and you just, sacrifice everything and you do, you work, work, work and try to solve problems for 10 years, it's very unlikely mm -hmm. that at some point you're not going to find something where you're really successful. Mm -hmm. But often it takes much longer than yeah, what people think. Yeah, you have to think. keep pivoting, 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 pivoting. And you've suddenly catch the hype. But for me, I think my first one is successful. Actually, yeah. Yeah, but the, the bad thing with being successful the first time is that you can't make it long lasting. It's like a one-off event. You cannot keep replicating the success because we didn't, we are not fast enough to catch the Capitalize. Trend. Yeah. Capitalize yeah. on the... Mm, because you have no experience. Absolutely. It happens too fast. Absolutely. Your mind blowing. And then there's another thing, which is a successful entrepreneur mentality will change with time. The more you're successful, the more you get probably known publicly. And the more you get big and successful, the more you're afraid of failure, right? And become risk averse because you don't want to fail publicly. And it's, it happens to a lot of like really big entrepreneurs. They're like, I lose my appetite for risk because I don't want to fail publicly because I would, I would look like a, I would be ashamed, right? Because if I was successful early on, it means people will think I'm really special. Uh... And, and then they start to know me. And then they're kind of like probably going to make fun of me. And there is this mega ego problem of entrepreneur because the more you're successful the more probably you you build an ego and the more the less you want to fail at what you do mm. yeah it's true it's true yeah i think it's normal probably normal and what i mean why would they still want to be an entrepreneur right it takes so much mental strength to build a to, to start a new business again you probably want to be a like a vc investor or be an angel investor to advise on other people it's like much safer And you should give, actually, to be honest, all these successful entrepreneurs just give the chance to the young, young people to, exp to experiment and to, 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 to uh, make their own business instead of just doing a new business. Mm -hmm. Unless you really enjoy building new stuff. I Otherwise, but if you like Elon Musk, he built, uh, he built the, the Red Success Project and he keep building again and he, now he bought Twitter and trying to do again. I think for him, this is the kind of achievement. He had a sense of achievement where he built something new. Yeah. But for most other people, they think ego is more important. People just have like different uh, pursuits in the life. Absolutely. What's your biggest prediction for the next 12 months? For, for crypto anything. market? Uh, Let's do a crypto one and a, and a non-crypto one. For crypto one, uh, I think... Probably BTC and Ethereum are going to, I think probably can go, go back to like 550K. Oh, it's already above 50K, like 60K and $4,000. Yeah. Previous all time high? Probably, probably. Next I problem. think so. I think so. Yeah. I think, and I think the Bitcoin ecosystem is going to be more thriving. Okay. Mm. So there's going to be more, I mean, there's more narrative with all these L2s and these ordinals and mm -hmm, everything mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it, you think it's going to become something that's less boring because it's been seen as a very boring asset right you just hold it and you do nothing with it there's no real narrative I mean now there is but before there was no real na narrative that was like kind of exciting why should I invest in that okay it's digital gold or it's going up in time it's safe it's 
Whereas Ethereum or Solana, all these others, like, oh, there is all these things being built on the top. But I think the, the Ethereum narratives are dying off. There's nothing much new coming up recently. So unless people can find something that is new and more exciting, otherwise, I think Bitcoin is still going to be the main, uh, the main role in the, in, the, in the... The main role. Yeah, yeah. In the next 12 months. What about non-crypto stuff? Non-crypto stuff... Non crypto stuff, I'm not really sure. Yeah, because for AI, I'm not really like a huge fan of AI. Or I'm like, or, and, and also, if you want to talk about the economy from both US and China, I think um, I don't have much to predict in mm. the next, two, next 12 months. Yeah. What's your key message for today's podcast? I should close all my positions right now. <laughs> That's actually. A really good one. And probably, I hope you do it. Uh, buy for your Bitcoin own sake. when when it drops to uh 40k, drops to below 40k, and buy some Bitcoin. Just you think like it's a good spot to buy Bitcoin under if 40k. It's, yes, under 40k. Yeah. If it goes there. Yeah. I hope it won't because I'm lonely. Because, you, but... because you're leveraged. <laughs> yeah, but but if it ever goes to below 40k, I'm gonna buy some spot. Amazing. Thank you so much for doing this. That was amazing.